Uh, listen, hot gadgets have been around for years. It's nothing new. And the price of early adoption has always been high. But what about those of us who don't need to own the PlayStation 3 right away? I know it's crazy, but how much is really too much? Gadgets like the iPhone, the PlayStation 3, and high-def DVD players are all here, but they don't come cheap, with Americans expected to shell out over $155 billion this year on electronics. One of the most anticipated devices of all time, the Apple iPhone, debuted at $600 this summer. But after only a couple of months on store shelves, Steve Jobs has already slashed the flashy phone's price by $200. Sony's PlayStation 3, which also debuted at $600, enjoyed a $100 price drop this summer when the new 80 gigabyte model was introduced. However, rumors from the Tokyo Game Show reveal that another big price cut may be on the way. Early adopters may pay top dollar for new gadgets, but analysts say that the mainstream will not spend more than $400 on any new electronics, a price point that may decide whether a gadget lives or dies. Will high prices kill the latest tech no matter how cool it is? And how much are you willing to spend for today's hottest gear? Save your receipts. It's the loop. All right, my guests tonight from here in Los Angeles, editor for IGN's Gear Channel, Jerry Block, and from the CNET Studios in San Francisco, executive editor for CNET.com, Tom Merritt joins us. Gentlemen, welcome to the loop. Jerry, I'd like to start with you because I know you're, you fancy yourself an early adopter, and Analysts say that 400 bucks is the ceiling for most consumers. I'm curious, do you think they're right? Is there a sweet spot when it comes to the price point on new gadgets? I'd say, I'd say so, definitely. $200 is a really good mass market price. It's been uh, illustrated pretty well. 400 to a degree is the top range. There are a number of ways you can really analyze it. Uh, one of them that I tend to ascribe to is the fact that if you're dealing with the 18 to 34 year old male demographic and their median income, which is maybe, I don't know, $40,000, in terms of biweekly income, you actually have to save up or plan for a purchase if you're going to spend about more than 400. So, in this so you're saying across culture, the board, 200 bucks or so, that's a sweet spot. That's an impulse buy for your average uh, mass market 18 to 34 year old male. Yeah, and to go above 400 actually requires budgeting and saving up, which people just don't like to do. So I agree, the $400 price point is kind of a maximum. All right, Tom, do you agree with Jerry here? Uh, not exactly. I, I'm, one, I'm the guy. I'm the guy in the room. It's like, well, it's different for everybody, right? I mean, there's the early adopters like me who are idiots and are going to go spend $600 on an iPhone the day it comes out and even don't even feel all that screwed when they drop the price two months later because we got it first. And I think there's a market for that and there's a price point for that. And then you have the people who are waiting for the price to come down and, and then there's the people that are going to wait till it gets super cheap. So you've got different markets and I think it's different for different gadgets. I, I, I don't think $400 is such a bad price to, if you have to generalize, but I think if you really want to be specific, when you're talking about a different type of gadget and different type of people, there's different price points. It's just economics 101. I certainly agree with you on that point. You know, I mean, I bought an iPhone at 600 and agree, I agree. I don't feel too screwed over the price cut. Um, but, you know, in you terms mean, of like mass... You like the only two people in the world. <laughs> no, I think, I think a lot of people bought the iPhone expecting it to come down in price, maybe not this much this soon, but Pretty it quick, happened. Yeah. But let, let's talk about the iPhone then, Tom. I mean, when you look at it here, 600 bucks for a phone, it didn't stop really anybody from going out and picking one up early. So does that completely negate the argument that there is a magical price point at all for consumers? It doesn't completely negate it. It just means what you said. There's segments of the market. I think they're playing it very close, saying, look, we know we can sell it at $600 to this many people, and we got through that many people pretty quickly, so let's drop it down, not just because we want to sell more of them, but we also introduced this new line of iPods, right? And the iPod Touch is the iPhone without the phone in it. So if that's going to sell for $399, then we got to make the iPhone competitive not only with other phones, but with ourselves. Right. Now, Jerry, this, this price drop, come on, Apple knew about this from day one, right? This had to be part of their plan to get it out there, get a little extra cash from the early adopters, then drop it down a bit and, and, and uh, ward off the suckers with maybe a $100 credit, which you can't buy anything for at the Apple store. You know, it's true, and I totally agree with the point. You can't orphan the iPhone by launching a $400, $300 even uh, iPod Touch against it. That would, that would kill it. So the price drop was inevitable. Uh, yeah. But, Tom, was this, all, was this all premeditated? Did Apple know, hey, we're going to drop it 200 bucks uh, less than a month later, and then you know, we're going to give people a credit if they get a little upset? 
They probably had a really good idea. I think Steve Jobs is the only person who knew he could give that $100 credit. So they knew they were going to drop the price point. He decided when. They made the drop. And then he waited to see what the reaction was. And he had that $100 in his pocket. He was waiting. He's like, if right. they get real angry, I'll throw that out there. Why he didn't just say it right in the big announcement, I don't know why. I think that would have been smarter. It would have obviated a lot of the anger and criticism. But you know, you can buy stuff in the, in the Apple store for $100. You can get a shuffle. It's only yeah. 79 bucks. Oh, you that's get a true. Vi or uh, or the Dora the Explorer for, head, for OS 10. Bucks, yeah, bucks. that's great. There's a couple pieces of software. You can make iTunes gift card. And you can get a, a coffee mug. That's great. But they know people are going to go in there and put that $100 towards a laptop, and it's a smart move That's what on they're that hoping account. for. Absolutely, yeah, because then it doesn't come out of their bottom line. Right. But now, Jerry, is this going to create a backlash for people who said, look, I understand I'm an early adopter. I understand that Apple products always get cut in price, but will there be a backlash now because this happened so soon, because it was such a drastic drop that people say, you know what, maybe I will wait off on the next Apple product? Uh, you know, the early adopters are Mac fans. There will always be an early adopter, I don't think. Right. And the people who bought it were uh, fans. You know, it's, uh, I really don't see it. Well, what about the PlayStation 3, Jerry? Because I know you got one right away. And even still, <laughs> maybe Warhawk is an <laughs> argument because Lair certainly isn't. There still really isn't that much to play on it. So was 600 bucks just too much to ask for essentially a Blu-ray player at the time? You know, there are arguments to be made. I think, in, in the end, the people who wanted a Blu-ray player bought it. I think they've kind of moved through that class of consumers. So at this point, I think it really would be a good idea to drop it in time for Christmas. It needs some compelling reason, especially when it's going up head-to-head -head against a better value option in the Xbox 360 right now. Tom, do you expect well, that Sony's going to drop the price of the console for this holiday? It better drop like a stone, man. I mean, <laughs> I, I, don't, I haven't checked lately, but PS2 was outselling the PS3 last time I looked. Right. So, I, and they're dropping that down to $99, I heard. That looks more attractive to me, and I already owned a PS2 and sold it. And I'm thinking about buying it back again for 100 bucks because, you know what, you got a lot of titles there, and there's not that much more you get with the PS3. So it's got to come down. Maybe $400 is the magic price point for the PS3 because that's sure. where I start to think, hey, I've got an Xbox 360, but it's not that much more to get the PS3 and get the Blu-ray. All right, well, Tom, I know you think the iPhone was one of those devices, but what do you think the next must-have device will be that that kind of ignores the, the magical price point, that can transcend that $400 barrier? What's the next must-have yeah, gadget? That, the, the tremors in the ground right now, we're hearing a lot about a Google phone that's supposed to be announced like any minute now. Don't they give so you the phone for free and make you listen to an ad every time you get a call, though? Isn't that how Google yeah, works? Yeah, seriously, that would be the Google model, right? I mean, something from Google behind it is going to make people go a little wacky and pay all kinds of crazy money for it. Also, the Apple uh, announcement in the U.K., where they are likely to announce a 3G iPhone. We don't know what the announcement is going to be. Pretty good bet it's going to be an iPhone, and if it's in right. Europe, it's got to be 3G. That could make some people in the U.S. want to grab that, unlock it, Absolutely. and be able to use it on the 3G network here. Absolutely. Jerry, final word to you, sir. What do you think that device is? What's the next must-have gadget that transcends that magical price point? You know, I honestly don't know about little stuff, but uh, technology-wise, OLED displays. Sony's got a little one coming oh, out this yeah. winter. That thing, that's, those are going to be awesome when they're full size. Yeah, those things do look absolutely incredible. All right, I want to thank Pretty. my guests, Jerry and Tom, for joining us in the loop. Appreciate it, guys. Attack of the Show, weeknights at 7, only on G4.